Paul's World Tour is the second film in a row I felt like wearing these shades for because it seemed apt. It's a very colorful film and I think it deserves to be worn. This is also the sequel to the 2016 movie Trolls, which was a fun child movie. And this is also the first film to be released on demand despite it having to get a theatrical release today. This was not indefinitely delayed, so this is technically a theater movie you're now watching in the comfort of your home. This was supposed to be in theaters right now. That's kind of amazing when you think about it. In this movie, Queen Barb, who heads a part of the Troll Kingdom that is majorly into rock music, is out to get the different strings of music, which can be pop, classical, etc. And getting all of them together, joining them into this guitar, and which will basically give her the power to have everybody in the Kingdom of Trolls to love rock music only and be slaves to it. And it's this thing which contains six different elements, in this case six different strings. And I'm not trying to point out anyone here, but there's this thing lying next to me and I figured it makes so much sense to have this around me as I review this movie. I don't know why, but something about it reminded me of something. This is not the only time you're going to hear this comparison. This film does have the most moments in there which relate very easily to Avengers Infinity War. I think uh, some reviews have already referenced this, but it's not going to be the last time you're going to hear this comparison. It's clearly a riff on that. It's not a major issue with the film by any means. I mean, there are lots of animated movies out there which have riffed on other things that have been done before, so there's nothing wrong with it personally. Uh, in my opinion, there's it's, it's whatever. My problem with Trolls World Tour is other stuff that's in the movie. But before I get into that, I'm going to talk about some stuff that I did actually like in it. I thought the animation was wonderful. It's a very colorful, vibrant, eye-popping movie and kids will love it. There's a lot of really creative visuals and some really nice stuff that they've done with musical beats and sequences that do deserve a lot of credit. There's a lot of different environments the characters go to this time around, so you definitely get to see a lot more variety in this world, which I thought was also really, really cool. The music is nice. There's some nice music choices in here. There's some covers. There's a lot of covers, actually. And it's nice. Sometimes you sing along to a few things. The movie opens with Rock You Like a Hurricane by the Scorpions, which was amazing. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if that's what you want out of this movie, then this movie will do all of that for you. Unfortunately, where the movie lacks is pretty much everywhere else. This film's not really got much more under the surface, much like the first movie, but I think in this one it makes sillier decisions. You follow the characters Poppy and Branch again, Ina Kendrick and Justin Timberlake, who the voice casting for them is fine, and they're doing fine in the performances. They're very energetic and they're having a good time, and so are the other supporting characters. The problem is, the writing for them is just so sparse. I've said that word a lot in the last day, that's why I'm saying it again, I said it for Batman Forever too. But for some reason, these characters, especially Poppy, makes a lot of decisions that don't really make sense, and we're sort of supposed to just go along with it. In fact, even at one point in time in the movie, they're calling her out for it, like, you're constantly making these bad decisions, and, you know, we're just following you into them. And I'm like, yeah, someone in the movie's speaking sense, finally. And she makes some drastic decisions without even giving it a second thought that made no sense to me. It sort of felt like if I suddenly like woke up in the morning and I had like, I don't know, fruit juice and coffee at the same time. Like it's not recommended, but like imagine if I did that. It's a dumb idea. You're gonna be screwed for the rest of the day. Uh, don't do that. I only give that mild comparison because it's a kid's movie. <laughs> yeah. But the film has many corners like this which are consistently cut and it doesn't earn a lot of its emotions as it's approaching its final act because the film does go into those deeper moments, much like the first one did because I remember the first one, I've only seen it a couple of times, but I remember watching it and when we were getting to the third act it got so sad and so, like, somber and I kept thinking, what is going on? This, does this feel earned or not? Like, they're talking about they're dying, they're gonna die and... I just don't feel it. 
very similarly, this film has emotional moments which I just didn't feel. And that was very disappointing. I wanted to be more connected. I wanted to feel more like these characters were going through some hardships. But I just never had that moment in the movie where I was like, Yep. I, he got me. You got me. Whew. I just, I, I just never had that. Now, I'm not going to reprimand those who will probably enjoy the film. Like, if you enjoy this movie, that's great. And then more power to you. I'm not going to sit here and be like, if you don't like this film, you don't like film at all. Like, you know, people enjoyed the first one quite a bit. My dad enjoyed the first Trolls quite a bit. You know, I don't reprimand him for that, but, you know, I, I'm personally not a fan of it. There is the argument to be made that this movie may not have been made for me. And that seems logical. This movie is not quite up my alley. Um, as a kid, I would probably see myself loving the hell out of this, though. It's got a lot of flashy visuals and music, and I'm pretty sure if you're somebody who watched the first one while on something, you probably enjoyed it a lot more than I did. Um, so that's not my recommendation to have something and watch this movie. I'm just saying that it must have happened. But, on the other hand, Trolls World Tour is a nice enough distraction for kids, families, and actually a nice movie to watch at home. Because it, 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 it's not something that I would see myself going to a theater for, but because it's available at home, a lot of people can now check it out. And this is a good experiment because if this works, if a lot of people get this movie and watch it, much like everybody streamed the hell out of Tiger King in the last month, then there's a very good chance that more studios will be open to this and you might not have to wait months and months to see a film that you were probably waiting for desperately to see. Not to say that I want movie theaters gone entirely, but it's just an option. So yeah, um, check it out if you can. It's, it's an alright movie. It's not terrible. Um, it's just alright. I'm gonna give Trolls World Tour a 6 out of 10. I can still appreciate the music though and the animation that has gone into it. All of that stuff needs to be praised and it's worth checking out just for those accomplishments. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. Look forward to more reviews very soon. As always, if you like this, please do subscribe and I'll see you guys at the movies.